working. It looks like it is. So I'm going to watch um, the comments that are coming in because I, what I really want to do tonight for you is to talk um, about soul loss and soul retrieval, essentially, which is what I do. Uh, the core of everything that I do, while I don't really talk specifically, um, I haven't been talking much about the specifics of that. And I really want to talk about that and answer questions for you, kind of talk to you about what that looks like in our lives. So if you have questions, I would love it if you would, uh, you know, pop your questions in there so that I can, um, you know, follow along with those questions to make sure that I'm seeing it. So if you are, you know, on say, hi, ask me questions. Uh, this is all a little bit new to me. So, um, not really doing a trial run on this. So if there's anything that I miss, I will definitely catch up with you. Um, when I, you know, when I can, so, what I really want to share with you and talk to you about is understanding what soul loss is and, you know, the work that I really do to help you take that back or, you know, kind of take parts of you, you back soul loss in my work is fragmented parts of us. Ultimately, this is where you wake up in the morning. You don't feel like yourself. You feel like you're lost. You can't, you, you can't remember anything. You are struggling, maybe even struggling with things that you really love to do. Um, you feel like you don't know exactly how you got here. And you would actually say, it feels like a part of me is missing. It feels like I lost something or I lost, I haven't been the same sense, you know, different things cause soul loss for people. I mean, sometimes what I like to say is it's like a culmination of things until we reach the point where it's like, where did I go? You know, these are the questions that you'll be asking yourself. Where did I go? Why do I react in certain ways? Um, why am I feeling numb or not here or not present? Why am I struggling with my emotions? anger, um, you know, things are not typical for you, you know, being over emotional or under emotional in certain ways, feeling like you're lost or numb or, you know, especially a lot of us during the pandemic, what essentially is happening in that soul loss is that we're shutting down. Our system is essentially shutting down and we're saying, I can't, um, deal with this. I don't really know how to do, to do what I, what I have to face and what I have to deal with. So, parts of ourselves sort of fade away and, or they, they just, you know, leave. So one of the things that's really common is trauma. Uh, you know, if you had traumatic experiences, any abuse, any violence, um, addictions often cause uh, us to fragment parts of ourselves. Uh, car accidents are really common for things like traumatic events that sort of feels like, you know, we go into shock uh, when certain, when things happen. And when you go into shock, sort of parts of you are, are you know, lost or fragmenting from you. So this is why so many people will, will say to me, you know, Tanya, since this happened, I don't feel like myself. I don't feel like the same person that I was. I feel like I'm, you know, people will come to me a lot and say, you know, after I had a baby or I went through postpartum depression or, you know, ever since I had surgery or, you know, all kinds of things that, that people will come to me and say, you know, I just haven't been myself. People are always trying to get back to this feeling that you had, this energy that you had, this aliveness is essentially what it is that you're, that you're really looking to reclaim and take back in your life. And this is what we call the fragmented parts of us. And in order for us to really live in the world that we live in, in this sort of modern world, um, many of us have to fragment parts of ourselves. It's so it can happen sort of through a traumatic event or traumatic incident, or it can also happen through like what I call leaking. It's like parts of you just leak away. They just fade away. You know, you're in um, an unhappy relationship and just feel like you're not really alive and, and you're just kind of going through the motions in that relationship. You don't know how to get out of it. You, you're not sometimes you're not even unhappy. You just aren't happy. Um, jobs are, is a really big one where a lot of people really compromise their, their essence and their energy and their spirit, because we stay in a job for, for certainty, we stay in a job for income. And, you know, if you're going to a job every single day that you dislike, or that you really hate, and you're only there for the money, you know, I hear every day from people telling me that the only way I can go to my job is that I'm, I'm taking medication so that I don't feel anything anymore because I can't cope. And so I'm just going because I have a mortgage to pay, you know? So, I mean, I know that you can relate to that, right? I remember when I was there 
in 2010 before I left my corporate job to do my own thing. And I loved the company. Um, I loved the people I worked with. I was paid well for what I did. Uh, it was none of those problems, but I just didn't like the work. I didn't want to do it every day. I couldn't imagine spending 30 or 40 more years of my life doing this. And I would, I, at the time I was not doing any soul work, but I would use the phrase, you know, it's like, this is like soul sucking, you know, coming in here, doing this work every single day. And, you know, I could do it and I did a good job. Um, you know, all the reasons that we would stay pension over passion. Right. And I just knew that I had to figure it out and I had to try. And so, you know, that was part of my journey was, was leaving, um, that behind and, and coming out to do my own thing. And I've never regretted it. You know, there was definitely lots of days where it was hard, um, you know, much harder than, you know, if I'd stayed, but I don't think it was harder than if I had stayed. And if I had to lose myself or shut myself down in order to continue to do that, but career is a really big place where we lose ourselves, um, because of, you know, there's so much our survival is attached to income and money and all of these things. So many of us will, will turn off all of our feelings and all of this stuff in order to continue to go to a job that, you know, pays our bills. And we understand that, right? It's just, you know, it's like sort of we're compromising our soul, um, you know, for that paycheck. And this is, uh, you know, Karl Marx talked a lot about this and like the compromisation of who we are um, and that there's not enough room for us in, in, in this capitalist world that we live in. And, you know, there's some realities of what we, of what we think that we think, and we believe that those are realities of the world that we live in. But, you know, I've learned that there's much easier ways to actually create things and, you know, shift our emotions, shift um, our energy and really be fully present in our lives, you know, based on, uh, you know, our emotional um, space and not needing to shut down, but to be able to pull all of that in and be fully present in our, in our lives. So, you know, but I digress for a minute. Another really popular one that people will tell me is parenting, motherhood, um, parenting, or, you know, fatherhood, some really mega changes in your life. Um, especially if you have, you know, any children with challenges or anything. And I mean, even, you know, all parenting is going to be really difficult. And so a lot of people really struggle with the transition between, um, you know, going into, into motherhood and really not having a whole lot of support, losing, you know, losing the, who they were, um, and having to embrace that. And we really don't do rites of passage anymore. So a lot of people get stuck in this energy of like trying to be who they were before they were moms and then not being able to embrace it. So it's like this, you know, constant conflict of trying to embrace motherhood, but also trying to still, you know, be yourself and find yourself in this. And that's a constant conflict. And usually what ends up losing is, is being yourself and then sort of shutting down emotionally for the things that, you know, you think that you can't handle or that you're dealing with um, that are really difficult. So there's lots of ways that we actually can go through the world and sort of have soul loss. During the pandemic, it would have been really big for a lot of people. Like I'm hearing from a lot of people right now that they're really struggling with coming back into the world post pandemic. It's like, you know, I went home, everything was shut down. I was shut down for so long. Now I don't know how to talk to people anymore. I don't want to put pants on, you know, I just don't want to go to work. I don't want to do anything. People have really gotten into a rut and we had to learn to stop. And now we're trying to learn to start again. And a lot of people are really questioning their lives and their life choices. And, you know, the decisions that, that we really have happening for us in, you know, in, in where we're moving and, and what we're doing moving forward. So some people, you know, discovered that they don't like their positions at all. And they're looking for something different. Some people feel really trapped in their work and don't know how to get out of it and don't know what else to do. Um, you know, other people have decided that they're looking for something that really aligns with the values and how they want to live their, their lives. Other people are deciding that they want to create their own thing. Um, but many people that I'm hearing from are struggling with making decisions at all. It's, um, you know, it's really trapped in that stock energy of, you know, is it all still gonna, you know, is it, is it going to close again? Is, is everything going to be open? What, where are we? And it's this sort of roller coaster and upheaval that we've been on for the last two years that you go home, you have to go home and be okay and just sit down and be good and support press, um, you know, everything else that's going on around you, because there's literally nothing we could do, you know, in those situations. And so as you know, we're, we're decompressing from that, it's um, creating a lot of these challenges where people are trying to you know, wake back up and shake themselves loose uh, from this. And, and there's a, there's a big struggle in that. So soul loss is essentially um, when we are not fully at home within ourselves, 
we, it, it, it manifests and it looks like um, struggling with making decisions, feeling numb, um, emotional roller coasters of like anger, emo, you know, sadness, sort of those extremes in those roller coasters. It also feels like um, nothing, a lack of existence. It feels like, is this all there is to life? It feels like underwhelmed, right? And, and probably even at times overwhelmed with things. It's uh, looking around at your life and saying, I thought that it was going to be different than this, or I wanted more, or I thought it was going to feel different than this. And um, not knowing how to make those changes. It's about inability to make decisions. It's about not knowing what's right for you or not, you know, shutting yourself down. If you, even if you do know what's right for you, it's about shutting yourself down and not doing the thing that you need to do. It's accepting limitations within your life instead of looking around and saying, oh, you know, how can I break through these limits? What's my solution here? And so soul loss, um, can feel really, uh, I mean, it feels really numb. I remember when I understood what I was experiencing and I talk about this in my book. So if you want to read the story, um, you can, you can pick up a copy of my book and there's a part in the book where I do detail going to an event and doing, um, an experience. It was like, sort of like a meditation experience. And we were walking, you know, I was going down this hallway and I was like opening all these doors and, you know, I knew that there was something that I was searching for and somewhere I knew that I'd been in this place before. And you know, I finally got to the end of this place and I saw this room and I opened it up and it was so familiar to me as if I, if I'd been here and I was about to leave because there was nothing in there, but then sort of in the, in the corner of my eye, I saw like this big, what looked like a giant bird cage and hence the name of my book unchained. Right. I probably guess I could have called it uncaged, but that didn't feel right. So it just, you know, it doesn't sound, um, didn't sound right. So um, it was in this big giant bird cage, and there was sort of like a version of me that was in there that was like waif thin, dark, starving. You know, it was like just something, some part of me that had been fully neglected. And that set me on the journey of my soul work. Um, was when I when I found that sort of part of me in my psyche, which is a metaphor, right? All of these things that happen are a metaphor for what's actually happening inside of us, our inner work. And what that represented was. Uh, when I locked down and shut down my own ability to make decisions, my own spirit, my own power, um, and all of those things were lost to me. And that was when I started to conform to who the world wanted me to be, you know, people telling you what you're, what you can do, what you can't do, what degree you should have, you know, what car you should drive, what, what, what your goals and dreams should be, what, you, you know, how many of us have given up on the things that we truly want to do because someone told us that we can't make money doing it. And, you know, who cares sometimes if we can't make money doing it? Maybe we do it because we love it. And it's not about everything has to be commodified or monetized, you know, in order for it to be worthy. But in the world we live in, that's exactly what's happened for many of us. And also who gets to say that we can't monetize, you know, our art or, you know, our writing or anything else that we really want in the world? Who gets to really tell us those things? So some of these experiences will happen because we're traumatized. So for me, it was absolutely a traumatizing experience when that would have happened. It was sort of culminating. I wrote a blog about this today. It was or a couple of days ago where it was about chasing my worth. And it was about you know, this, this collision of a number of events that were happening in my life right around the same time, um, that were making me not want to be there, that were making me adopt this new identity, um, making me not care and putting on this really hard exterior and losing a big part of myself, my softness and, and, you know, letting the world turn me, um, you know, into something that I wasn't and into someone that I wasn't. And eventually, you know, we do that long enough. We forget that that's not who we are. And, you know, that was my journey. So when I found that part of myself in there, that was the moment that I knew that I had to find out and heal all the reasons that I threw those parts of me away and why I didn't want people to know about certain things and, you know, why I couldn't uh, speak up or why I lost my voice or my silence myself. And I knew that I had to walk into, into those spaces. And so that, that became a really deep soul journey for me. And through that, I, um, really discovered, you know, what it means to call back parts of ourselves and how powerful that can be. And so I created, well, I, I mentored and trained under many people, um, for many years to be able to, to do the work that I do. But even in my own work, it became something that I was able to find really deeply within myself because 
I, you know, had to put this formula together and in putting this formula together, it gave me these access points to step in and find those triggers that were triggering me. And that was making me slam the door on, on the things that I really wanted and pretend that I was someone that I wasn't and pretend that I didn't want the things that I really did want in life. Um, you know, all of, all of those things, and then have to heal those and go through a process of releasing and healing those things. And then, you know, deciding that you're going to be, and, and go after what it is that you really want. And so there's a, there's a a whole process um, that we work through. And in that working through it, um, we call, we bring, we bring those parts of ourselves back. And then on the other side of that, there's also a process that I do um, because I'm trained in it to actually do it for you to like, you know, there's, there's a really powerful process that I do um, that, that is an incredible experience um, where, you know, I get really deeply involved in that piece of, of being able to bring um, those fragmented parts back. And that's really exciting. I'm not going to go into that tonight just because um, I'm not. Um, so, but that is, uh, there, there's kind of two ways to do it. And one of the reasons that I really like the first way is because it puts you in charge of your own journey and puts you in charge of your own healing and puts you in the driver's seat um, of that experience. And not only, you know, are you walking parts of yourself back, but you're really healing the reasons that you lost it. So then when things happen in your life, you're not risking shutting that down. So essentially, you know, what soul loss is, is when we emotionally, mentally, and spiritually completely shut down from, from life. And I did a, I'll I'll drop the link in the comment section here, but when I, um, when I, I think I froze for a second. Some, something happened. So, um, you know, when we look at, um, you know, when we emotionally shut down and we turn off, it's essentially saying, you know, I'm not able to deal with this situation. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know what to do. No one really took us and taught us any of those experiences. So for many of us, we were, especially as women, we were taught to be nice, to be good, to be pleasing. Many of us were also really conditioned into fear to choose the safe route. Um, We were, you know, taught to choose pension over passion. We were taught to choose that determined paycheck. We were not taught to believe in ourselves that we could be anything or do anything, you know, and we weren't taught how to have resilience on that path. Instead, many of us were taught how to go home and get off that path and just choose the safe path. It's like the story of Red Riding Hood, right? You know, if we if we go off the path or we go out alone or we go into the world and, you know, the big bad wolf will come. So then if we do go out and we try something and then things don't go the way we wanted them to go um, or, you know, we get ourselves in trouble in any way, something bad happens to us, then, you know, that that becomes an internalized blame. And then that conditions us even further to not actually go out there and do things. So when we, you know, soul loss is ultimately, you know, where we fragment parts of ourselves and send them away, shut them down. Essentially, we put them, we shut them down into a box. Like uh, when I did a talk for, and I'll drop the link in the, um, in the comments, what I was about to say when I got frozen. Um, but when, you know, I did this talk, I talk about this box and we're given this box when we're born and essentially, you know, all these things that happen that no one tells us what to do with all these traumatic events, these experiences, we think that if we shove them all down and forget about them, that they won't impact us. But what ends up happening is that not only do they impact us, but they become the very thing in us in, in order for us to try not to touch what's in that box, we end up, um, you know, creating a life that is not authentic because there's parts of us that haven't been embraced. You know, if we're rejecting parts of ourselves and abandoning ourselves in self-abandonment um, and self-rejection, uh, then, you know, we can't create an authentic life. We're not authentic, right? We're not authentic if we haven't embraced um, all parts of ourselves and, and become whole in that, in, in the pain, in the wounds, in all of the things that we've experienced. So that creates this fragmentation. And this is, I'll drop the link to the talk that I gave at One Woman Fearless. It's a short 20 minute um, thing where I talk about, you know, when we get this and then what ends up happening is that at some point in our lives, that box gets full. And that's usually when I get people, when people come and say to me, this is my threshold. I don't want to live like this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I need to solve this problem. And that looks the same. Soul loss is essentially the same. Like if you are recycling a problem with your weight and your body, you're in rejection of your body. And, you know, we need to go in there and find out why, you know, what is really causing all that pain in your body that you cannot embrace and be at home in your own body 
or, you know, how are you destroying your body, right? From like these places. So it looks the same. It's the same thing if we're doing, you know, this walking to, to our healing and reclaiming our full power so that we can create a life that we really love to live and feel that we deserve as well as, you know, if it's something that you're dealing with in terms of addictions, money problems, um, or, you know, not choosing the career that you really want to be in, you know, it's, it's about all of these ways that we do the status quo. We don't stir the pot. We don't rock boats. We don't do any of those things. And we just do what we're supposed to do. And in that doing what we're supposed to do, we lose our spirit. We lose that fighter, that warrior spirit, that wild woman spirit, that, you know, intensity and passion to live. People say to me all the time, you know, today that like, you know, you're so lucky. Their luck has nothing to do with the life that I created. In actual fact, if you look at my history, you would pretty, pretty much say that I'm a, I was a pretty unlucky person, you know, with some of the experiences that I've had, some of the challenges that I've had, a lot of them were absolutely made on my own hand by my own decisions. Some were not, some were things that, that other people did to me. And I had to crawl out of those things. That was a choice. That wasn't luck. I wasn't lucky in, in building the life that I built. I just decided one day that I don't want to, I don't want to half live. I don't want to wake up one day when I'm 85. I think my biggest fear in life is regret. And I don't want to wake up one day when I'm like 80 or 85 or 90 years old and say, geez, I, I wonder what would have happened if I had, you know, written that book, or I wonder what would have happened if I started that business. I don't want to, you know, spend the majority of my life counting down the days until I'm not in a situation anymore. I want, to, you know, lean into those places where I can find out what the thing is. I don't want to be held back by anything. And that's what drives me, you know, to always be looking relentlessly um, for those solutions. And so any part that I can find, and that was what it came down to is that I didn't want to compromise the life that I could live, you know, for the life that I should live. And that became, you know, a big part. So luck has very little to do with it. Maybe a little grace um, in certain things and meeting certain people and being aligned with certain things on the path. But that also only happens when we make decisions that we want something different. You know, a lot of times we think we're sitting in a job that we despise and we think, you know, when I come into a pile of money, I'll leave. Um, but it's not until you make the decision to leave will you come into the pile of money. You know, people think it's backwards. It's like, I'll love myself when I've lost the weight, but you lose the weight after you start the loving yourself. That's the way it works. It's counterintuitive. Oftentimes we're living in that fear. We're afraid of the thing. We're afraid to let go ultimately. So we choose the certainty of what we know over the uncertainty of what we don't know, but it's in the uncertainty of what we don't know that all of our life and our power and our soul and our spirit actually gets to come fully back to life. So luck doesn't have anything to do with what I created. It come, it, I created it from making choices and investing in myself and saying no to things, you know, that I didn't want and not compromising um, on those things. And absolutely I've compromised on things. There were times that I made decisions out of fear. There were times that I compromised what I really wanted. There were times that I settled. There were times that I did those and all of those times it led to pain that I had to end up crawling out of. So I no longer do that. It doesn't matter if I have to go home and sit down for two months to figure something out now, which is what I was just doing for the last two, two and a half months, um, because I promised myself that I'm not ever going to do those things again, because the, the crawling out of the ditch, when you end up in the ditch, because you went and did it from the wrong energy, you know, is not worth it for me anymore. So I will do the work on the front end of it instead of the extra work that I'll have to do on the back end if I make those mistakes. Um, but you know, mistakes are how, are how we grow and they're how we learn and how we ultimately come back to life. So, you know, soul loss is, is my, that's what I do for people. That's every, you know, retreat that you see, every program that I offer, everything that I do, every blog that I write, every conversation that I have is ultimately, you know, based in, um, is based in, in, in what's happening within our soul. It's, it's based on how do we get people back, you know, into living and not just existing. That's the questions that I ask is, you know, what would it take for you to say yes to life and to really want to live your life and to overcome the conditionings, the fear and the belief systems around, you know, that's keeping you from living a, like, a life that you don't want to live or less than what you could live. You might be happy. Lots of people come to me who have a good life. They're happy. You know, they're not unhappy in their relationships. They're not unhappy in their careers, um, but there's something missing and they know that there's something missing. They know there's more meaning. They know there's something deeper for them and they're seeking that. And so, you know, it doesn't mean that we have to have had all these bad things. One of the things that I always talk to a lot of my clients about is it doesn't have to be something big and traumatic. You know, if you think about this box that I talked about earlier, you get these like all of us are given a box and that box is essentially our body. And, you know, all these things happen and they get put in there. That could be 2 million things 
that are small, box is still going to get full, or you might have a bunch of big things. And then maybe you don't have as much room for the small things. So we go around life and we see somebody who, you know, we think has a pretty easy, but we have no idea what filled up their box. And then the couple of small things that are putting that box over the edge, or we look at someone and say, geez, they wouldn't even know what trauma looks like because, you know, I know that they had a pretty easy life, but how do we know about what all those small things are in their box? We don't. And what ends up happening is whatever's in that box in your body, that's not healed. That is stuffed down. That is making you stay in places that you don't belong doing things that you shouldn't be doing. And all of those things, what ends up happening is all, you're going through the world and all that stuff is getting triggered. And those triggers are where you're not free. That's where your soul is being lost. And that's where you're fragmenting out so that you don't feel whole and that you feel like something's missing. And you feel like, you know, that, that, you know, you're struggling, or even sometimes you might feel like you're drowning or you're numb and you feel nothing anymore. You know, it's just everything. Um, so there can be combinations of those feelings, you know, feeling like nothing and then feeling everything all at once, or, you know, feeling um, overwhelmed or feeling underwhelmed. There's a million ways that, that, that it plays out because, you know, there's so many of us that we all have individual experiences of, of what we're doing, but you know, there's, there's certain patterns that are very, um, you know, we're, we're, for as much as we're different, we're all very similar. Um, ultimately the roots and the core of it are the same, but how it manifests in, in your life, you know, for one person it might, might manifest as money issues that you can never seem to get away from, you know, no matter how much money you make, you're broke at a higher level for another person. It seems like no matter what diet you choose or how many times you promise yourself that you're going to get healthy, it just keeps recycling over and over again. It's and, and for another person, it could be, um, addictions at another person, it could be, you know, really having a deep desire inside of yourself to create something, you know, write a book or, uh, you know, start a business or something like this, and then you're just not doing it. And then, you know, we end up losing ourselves every time that we um, shut down our passion and shut down our desire and, and bury it. And when we do that, normally, in order for that to stay gone, we will engage in behaviors that keep it gone. So we will numb ourselves with food or smoking or drinking or drugs or scrolling or TV, or all of these ways in which we can detect attach. So then there's never any quiet because if there's quiet, those soul parts will start knocking for us. And we don't want to hear what they have to say because they cause us trouble, right? They rock boats that we don't want to rock. You know, you say, well, I've been studying boats my whole life. I don't want to start rocking them now, but that's how we, that's ultimately the process of, you know, deciding that we're going to, that we're going to take our lives back and take our soul back is that, you know, we've got to step into that place of pure power where we live and, and where we start to believe in ourselves. And we start to look at the reasons that we are where we are and start asking ourselves, you know, deeper, bigger questions that is going to allow us to walk ourselves, you know, back into our body so that we can truly be here and, and be alive. I think it's one of the saddest things I see is how many people are not living, how many people that I see walking around day to day, people posting on social media and Facebook and, you know, all the things that people want in life, but don't reach out to get um, that are not, you know, that are just sort of walking around. They're not even here. My grandfather always used to say, you know, there's a lot of heads, there's a lot of bodies walking around with no heads. And we used to laugh about it. But as I got older, I really understood what he, um, what he meant by that. And, you know, it's this, it's about the fact that people are so disconnected. They don't even know they're here. The people, probably you will, will understand exactly what I'm saying in this, that you don't even know you're here. You're faded away. And a lot of the times that's what it feels like disassociation. It feels like I'm not even in the room. I don't even know who I am. I don't even know how I got here. You know, so what is it that, you know, I can have, um, you know, it's about calling ourselves back and, and having that process. So, um, you know, that's what the process of that's ultimately what I do for people is through various, you know, exercises, things that I put together for people through retreats, through events, through everything. Ultimately, the core of my work is soul is, is bringing the soul back, you know, and when I talk about wild soul and I talk about, um, you know, fragmentation and power loss and um, soul loss and all of these things, this is what I'm talking about is we lose ourselves. You know, sometimes we lose ourselves through big traumatic events. One of the a very common way to tip for where we lose part Parts of ourselves as well as through death. You know, I just coached someone recently who had three, four, four, you know, major losses in their life within three months. Um, I mean, it's very traumatic for people to go through and, and, you know, there's, there's a lot that has to be unpacked in all of that. Um, and this wasn't the person lost the people in three months, but it was years before they came, um, 
you know, to get that support that they needed and that they felt like they were gone. You know, they felt like, I don't even know who I am anymore. And this is like, this is a good indication that there's major power loss and soul loss. When you can say, I don't even recognize myself anymore. I don't know who I've become. And I feel like I'm not even here. And I, and I want to live again, you know, I don't want to half live and I need to find myself. And, you know, when you hear people saying these things, I need to find myself or, you know, I'm trying to figure something out. I don't know what's wrong. I'm, I'm trying to find something for me and you see like you know don't chop your hair off that's what I did you know but but you know we're looking for something we're searching for something and we're on that search and here's the thing is so many of us will go out on that search and we're looking outside of ourselves for the answer but the answers are inside you know all of this stuff that so many of us are experiencing in life that no one's really taught us you know, what to do with, um, you know, nobody's talked to us about our soul. No one's talked to us about our spirit. We've, you know, we know how to eat healthy, drink enough water, move our bodies, do all these things. Um, you know, we were even talking a lot about mental health. Uh, but what about our emotional and slash spiritual health? Because our emotions are a direct, um, they're, they're, they're a pretty good indication of where your spiritual health is, uh, you know, what's happening emotionally for you. And when those emotional things are happening, either numb, nothing too much, all these things are happening. Then what ends up happening for us is, um, you know, our, our soul can't come through. And when we, when we figure out those parts and we heal those parts and we work with those emotions and we work with those states that you're in, then the soul can, that can be cleared and the soul can speak to you in that way, um, through that thing. And so, you know, some people have many areas where you're dealing with, with some problem. I had someone reach out to me last week and say the post that you made on Facebook about weight problems and money problems and, you know, feeling like I'm not alive anymore. And also about my career. She's like, that's my entire life. Like everything in my life, like right now, I feel like I'm hurting in every area of my life and I can't make a decision. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I'm just thinking and thinking and thinking, and I can't get to the answer. The reason that you can't get to the answer and that you're exhausted and burned out from it is because you're up here and you're not in here. And so the answers will not be, there's like something flying around there. The answers will not be found up here thinking the answers will be found in here. But the reason that most of us can't get in here is because we've lost that connection because our soul is not fully present with us because of all the conditioning and experiences and beliefs and, you know, dysregulation that we've got in our life and disassociation from so many different parts of ourselves. So the learning how to do something is not up here and figuring out what your next right move is. Doesn't come from here. It comes from here. So when we, when we take the journey, which is the journey of unchained, um, which is the soul, that's the soul retrieval process is the journey from head to heart. It's, uh, there's a therapist. I can't remember which therapist, but said that, um, you know, back many years ago, the longest journey of our life is, is the one from head to heart. It's the shortest distance, but it's the longest journey because it takes us so long, um, oftentimes to actually move from here to here, but, um, our answers to everything that we need are in here. So this is what, this is ultimately what I do is that I navigate that journey with you from here to here to make it way faster than, you know, it needs way faster and to shorten it as much as we can, um, because other, it can be really long and tangly if you try to, you know, really do it by yourself as well as you can really get lost in there. If you try to be in there messing around with things, you know, I always say, um, if I needed a heart surgery, I'm going to go to a heart surgeon. Like I'm not going to go to a GP to operate on my heart. And I'm certainly not going to go to like the janitor in the hospital, nothing wrong with the janitor, but I don't want him operating on my heart. Right. So it's the same thing. You know, if I need uh, trauma counseling, I'm going to look for probably the best trauma counselor that I can find. Who's going to walk me through, um, some deeply traumatic experiences in my life. You know, I total my car and I need my car, um, you know, something done with my car, I'm going to go to the experts, you know, who do that for my car. And really, we need to be thinking about the same thing when it comes to our inner work and our spiritual work, and especially our soul, our soul is probably the most vulnerable and valuable thing that we actually have, because it's the true essence of who we are. And, you know, for many of us, um, you know, we need to have a deep, deep respect for that. So we need a lot of the times we need help on that journey and not just be sort of poking around at the, this and that. And I tell people all the time, like, when I first started soul work, I went to anyone and everyone. I went everywhere and did everything because for one, it was fascinating me, but I was in deep emotional pain and I wanted to solve it. And I didn't care, you know, what it took or where it was. I just really wanted to get myself back and I was willing to do whatever it took to, to get there. And a couple of years in, I actually realized, you know, this is the most intimate part of me. And I'm just like, 
whoring it around out there, you know, like everybody can have it. And I really started to be very careful about, you know, who I do that work with and, and really only allow people in, um, into that space. And we've got to think the same thing. You know, if you're going to go and have heart surgery, you want the best in the field. Right. And so if you're going to be looking at soul work, you also want to make sure that you really are uh, before you're, you're stepping into those places that you really understand, um, you know, what you're unpacking and that you need to have support and help along that path. Because if you don't, and you start to, you know, uncover things and you don't have any support, you can really make that a really tangible twisty journey that it doesn't need to be. Um, you know, that's just, <laughs> that's how I see it anyway. You know, I want to be even more careful about what people are messing with on my insides, even more sometimes than my outsides, because I can fix, usually fix something out here. Um, but you know, if we get in there and we like mess things up, you know, because I've had those experiences that I went to people who, um, you know, we really messed things up on the inside that took me way longer to crawl out of it. And sometimes I messed things up in there myself early on because I didn't realize, you know, what I was, what I was unpacking or what I was doing. And I didn't have the right support early on. I was unpacking trauma and I was unpacking deep emotional wounding. And the people that were helping me with that really had no idea. And I had no idea. And I had no idea that they had no idea. Um, so it wasn't in sort of until um, I really, you know, decided, okay, I need really deep support with this um, that I found you know, the right places to go that could really um, support that. And so that's what I really wanted to share tonight because one, I'm running a program called Medicine for the Soul. It's this entire process. It's it's a reclamation of the soul. It's soul retrieval. Uh, when you're finished this program, it's a 12-week mastermind. It is group coaching. Um, some people prefer to do this type of work on their own. A lot of my clients work privately. Um, I love the group environment because we all learn and grow together so much. But one of the um, things that ends up happening for uh, lots of people is that they just, they, they really want it to be a private journey. So it is available private coaching, um, as well. I only have one opening for private coaching right now, um, because I'm, I have a full roster for this fall, including, um, being back in school full-time. So if you are thinking about looking at something like this privately, it's a good, it's a good time for you to, um, reach out because I don't have a lot of openings left for that. Um, but right now what I'm, what I'm preparing and promoting is, um, medicine for the soul, which I started teaching during the pandemic. Um, because you know, I, this was, this is work that I've done since 2015 and everything I created was created based on this formula that I use. But during the pandemic, I realized I really wanted to give people back their power and how I can give you back your power is to actually teach you the exact formula that I use and how I use it and how we can unpack it. So that that you go through this process and then you can use this formula in any area of your life for the rest of your life. Sometimes we need blinds. We have blind spots, so we still need to go get some support when we're unpacking something. But that's my goal with medicine for the soul is to walk you back fully into your personal power um, by unpacking the things that need to be unpacked in your life and walking, you know, all parts of you back in. It's a very powerful program. The people that have taken it either through private or, um, group in, in mastermind, um, you know, it's a very life-changing experience. And, you know, you think about it, if you're walking around and you're missing parts of yourself, and then we bring those back, imagine how much clarity and focus you could have in your life. Imagine what it feels like to be in, in control of your decisions and to feel confident in who you are, what you want, and then knowing how to go out and get it. Imagine feeling, you know, feeling whole and feeling content and feeling happy in life and not feeling like you're missing out on something. Um, imagine really feeling like you're really alive and that you're living life and that, you know, when it's your time, whenever that is, we all hope it's going to be, you know, when we're 90 or 95 years old, but whenever that time comes to know that you're not wait, that you didn't sit around waiting to live and that, you know, you're, um, stepping into, to doing more than existing. There's an intense amount of power in making that decision to say, you know what, I want more and I want to experience, um, all that life has to offer. And I want to call all parts of myself back because this whole fragmentation feels, um, outdated and that I don't want to be living with outdated systems that might've served me when I was 10, um, but that they no longer serve me and that they hold me back from truly living, um, and claiming my destiny and claiming my full power. So, you know, that's why I do this. I love this work. I love getting inside of these places with people. I love watching people in the light and the energy come back. People come to my retreats and events. It's my favorite thing is to watch people walk in and, and see, you know, that, that lack of light and that lack of life in them and to watch like how alive they are when they leave an event and, and how, you know, many months and years later, I'll hear from people saying, you know, when I did that thing, it just brought me back to myself and it brought me back to life. And my life, you know, has never been the same ever since. And 
that, you know, that's what I want for people. And that's why I do this. And that's why I'm opening this up now to share. Um, so the program will start in September. It's off on early bird right now. So you can get in for um, early access and we're going to start in September. And I'm really excited. If you want private, you can reach out to me. Um, I'm going to drop the link for um, the page for medicine for the soul. And I'm here for any questions that you have. So if there's anything that you'd like to ask, uh, you know, land in my DMs or, you know, leave a comment on the video. I haven't seen any comments come in. And I don't know if that is because of the platform. I don't know if people are commenting. I can't really see anything. Um, so I'll find out in a minute. So if there's no comments, that's totally fine. Um, but you can also land in my DMs. Like it's a personal conversation. I get that a lot when we're talking about our soul um, and what we're experiencing in life that makes us want to put our hand up and say, Hey, you know, I need a little, some, I need a little support and I need some help here. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're ready to make that decision in your life that you're ready to live and that you don't want to, um, you know, sit around and waste any more time or waste any more days of your life, uh, you know, let me know because I would absolutely love to help you. And I'm here to answer any questions And I'm really, I'm um, careful about who I let into, you know, my masterminds and who I take on for coaching. Because one of the things is, is that I know who I can help and who I can't help. And I don't want to bring people in that I can't serve. So even if you're not sure, I will tell you, like I just had someone last week, um, you know, reach out to me for a type of coaching that I just don't do. And I said, you know, I don't do that. They were like, yeah, but you've been in business for, I don't care. I don't do it. So, you know, I know that that sounds whatever, but like I do what I do and I do what I do really well. And if I don't feel that you're ready for it, I won't try to, you know, I'm not going to push you into to something that doesn't serve you. Um, and that, cause ultimately that doesn't serve me or anyone else. So if you're curious about it, then there might be something else that I might even recommend for you to do. Um, but if you are interested, if this conversation is appealing to you, if you're like Tanya, I really feel like I have ma major soul loss. I'm going to talk to you guys about power loss in another time, maybe, you know, tomorrow, or the next day, I might come back on and talk about power loss um, because power loss is also where there's soul loss, there's power loss. And that's why oftentimes we feel powerless. We can't make decisions. Uh, we don't know who we are. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what's next. You know, all of these things, it's like, feels like we're really, you know, we're, we're um, in analysis paralysis and we're emotionally incapacitated, um, you know, in all of these ways. And we just feel like we, we just don't know. And we're really stuck and really trapped and, and power um, you know, the, where, where there's soul loss, there's 110,000% there's power loss. It just goes that way. Um, but even sometimes with, um, with power loss, you know, there's specific things that we can do in certain areas of your life where you feel powerless. And so many people, you know, experience both of those things. And so they really coincide. And so that's why medicine for the soul is about bringing back your personal power. Your personal power is when your soul is fully aligned and your energy is returned and restored to you, um, so that you know who you are. And when you know who you are and you are making choices from that energy, you'll never be wrong. Your soul will never steer you in the wrong direction. So that's why it's so important for us to get back into that energy. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. And I'd love to even hear from you, even if you're not interested right now, or, you know, you're just, this is the first time you've ever heard of this. I'd like to hear from you. Like, is this something that you've experienced? You know, do you recognize yourself in any of these places where we talk about um, soul loss? I remember when I, you know, first realized, like, as soon as I heard the word fragmented, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's me. Like I'm definitely felt fragmented. I felt broken. I felt like I was a chameleon. I felt like I was pulled in a million directions. I felt like I was constantly changing hats and changing outfits. And I haven't felt like that in a really long time. I am me. Like I don't have to change who I am in any room that I go in. Obviously there's like a time and a place, like whether I'm dropping F-bombs or I'm not, or, you know, there's certain conversations that I will or won't have, but I'm still me. The essence of me is still all that. And I'm not walking in and out just constantly in an outfit change of, you know, well, I'm a personal trainer here. I'm a fitness person here. I'm a daughter here. I'm a wife here. I'm a dog mom here. You know, I'm, I'm in a business event here, like all of these ways, um, where we're constantly trading up who we are. And that was how I used to feel. I feel like I felt like there was 20 versions of me and everybody, you know, I just gave everybody, everybody, whatever version of me they wanted or whatever version they expected. And then, you know, I didn't have anything left for me. And at the core of it, I didn't know who I was. And, you know, I just became whatever everybody wanted me to be. And, and I haven't felt like that in, in many, many years, you know, even during my illness, even during, you know, all of those things, I felt, 
um, lost for sure during my illness, but I was still me, you know, at the, at that place, I was still, I was fighting to get me back when I was sick. But even then I didn't feel like I was fragmented into a million different versions of me. Instead, now I, I am me in any room and I, there's a comfort in that. That's where my certainty comes from, you know, in knowing who I am and what I bring to the table and what, and, and, you know, in those places. So it makes a huge difference in how we go through life. But I remember the pain of what that felt like, you know, um, very clearly what it felt like to live like that. And I would never go back to that, not for anything, you know, it's always about moving forward. So if you recognize yourself in that, I would love to hear from you. So um, either leave a comment or land in the DMs, um, because I love talking about this stuff. So I can't wait to hear um, what you think. I'll talk to you soon.